what it might my, my... <sighs> it's gold you gotta shoot with your phone shoot with your camera shoot with your other phone shoot with your just saw someone out walking their sheep i'm used to seeing people out walking their dogs welcome back to the channel guys and welcome to beautiful krakow poland today we are going to be exploring the royal wawel castle and the jewish quarter of kazimierz so join us on this quick adventure around the beautiful city of krakow there's plenty of history in poland and we can't wait to check it out let's go our first stop today, before even entering Wawel Castle, is the Wawel Dragon or Smok Wawelski. He is a mythical creature of Polish folklore and he apparently was bothering the people of Krakow in the 13th century. And uh, in order to please this dragon, they were throwing cattle uh, at him for a while. <laughs> from inside the castle, but the the son of the king apparently figured out how to kill this creature by filling a cow with sulfur and throwing it at the dragon and then the dragon died. <laughs> so the statue of the dragon smock just outside the royal castle of Wawel, it breeds fire every five minutes and there's always people around it. So make sure that you get here relatively early uh, to be able to get up nice close and personal with the dragon as it's breeding fire it is a true spectacle it's probably great actually to come here at night because you'll really be able to see that flame look at this little cute dragon i want it so bad little smock <laughs> as with every tourist attraction you are going to find people selling souvenirs and Naomi really wants one of those smock dragons give it dragon <laughs> beautiful setting of this church just facing down on the Vistula River and we can't wait to go in now and check around the grounds. It's apparently free to check a walk around Wavel grounds. If you want an actual tour guide you do need to book in advance two weeks. Does anybody else have that issue that when you see souvenirs you kind of want to buy it? You know exactly you're never going to use those souvenirs. Even if I was to buy one of these dragons I would probably look at it for a while and then it would just die off somewhere in the corner or something like that. It's the same like with that. me. Like everywhere we go so far, since we started traveling, you go to all these destinations, you see the souvenirs and then you're just like, I want this. But then all it does is add weight to your suitcase. Yeah, that's the one thing. I would love to buy souvenirs everywhere, but we just have one backpack each. So apparently this was one of the very first UNESCO World Heritage Sites. That's really interesting. Um, all of the travel that we've done over the last year through Europe and Mexico and places like that, we saw a lot of UNESCO World Heritage Sites, but this is one of the very first ones. So, wow, excited to be here. All of the gardens that are surrounding Wawel Castle and the whole exterior around here that faces down onto the Vistula River. It's absolutely stunning. We were blessed today with beautiful sunshine. The sky is clear and we are very, very happy to be exploring around here today. Um, we're going to be walking around here, just kind of taking in the views. Thankfully, you can explore around here for free but as I said if you do want to go in and explore the rooms itself of the castle you do have to book well in advance because it is one of the most popular castles in all of Poland. It's really astonishing to see how much work was put into this castle. The majority of it was built in the 13th and 14th century but every single thing here, every house, everything is still standing. So it's not like it's a castle that is just lying in ruins somewhere, just kind of neglected. This castle actually is beautiful. 
and everything is still there and you can really imagine what it might have looked like in the 13th and 14th century. You can really see the level of wealth that the people that occupy this castle had. There is a lot of gold on this building that I'm currently standing in front of. One of the roofs actually just looks to be entirely made out of gold. So, hmm, huh, very interesting. And it's gold. gold. It's interesting <laughs> to note, like just the level of work that went into architecture back in the day. Nowadays, it's super straightforward. You have like little red bricks that they just cement and pile up together. But back here in the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th century, a lot more detail, a lot more work, a lot more beautiful. We wandered around the castle and found this absolutely amazing courtyard here. Um, the entry to the castle or to the castle yard itself is completely for free, but obviously there are some areas where you would have to pay, um, I think, to go inside the dragon's den where uh, Smok Vavil used to live. <laughs> you would have to pay and also for the museum parts you would have to pay but the general area here is for free. One recommendation for you guys if you ever choose to come here to Vavil Castle is definitely to show up very early in the morning because it does get quite crowded. Um, I think we got here around 10.30, maybe 11 o'clock and it's literally like filled with school classes, um, which is beautiful to see because a lot of these children obviously learn about their own heritage and about their own history, but at the same time it gets very crowded. So make sure to be here early. Wow, check this out guys. Um, it looks like they're actually growing grapes here in the yard of the castle and I'm wondering if they sell like a special edition type of Babel Castle wine or something like that. That would be absolutely amazing. So guys, Wavel Castle is getting a little bit crowded right now. There is literally every 30 seconds hundreds of kids and tourists making their way into the ground. So we're going to try now and make our way towards Kazi Mirz or the Jewish Quarter. Check that place out and show you guys some of the best cafes that we found while wandering through Kazi Mirz. Let's go. So, first impressions, Wavel Castle, what do you think? Wavel Castle is absolutely stunning. Um, it's a very unique place because like different architectures kind of clash together from the different centuries and you can really see, like if you, when you look around, you can see different centuries in different parts of the castle itself, which I think is absolutely stunning. I 100% agree with Naomi. If you do want to get some spectacular views over Krakow as well, definitely make sure to head up to Wavo Castle. It's entirely free to wander around on the grounds, but if you do, you can book a ticket as well if you do want to do that. Um, two weeks in advance is kind of the go-to, um, but there's plenty of tourists wandering around there, so definitely go and check it out. Check out Smok the dragon as well, the fire-breathing dragon, that's really cool. We would suggest you guys to come in the evening after sunset if you get the chance because I'm sure you would be able to take some stunning pictures of that dragon. So guys just to let you know we are currently on the quest to reach 5,000 subscribers so if you do like our videos and you like who we are go and hit that juicy red subscribe button and help us out. Thanks guys. We just saw someone out walking their sheep. I'm used to seeing people out walking their dogs but walking a sheep that was pretty special and there was a guy dressed up as Smok the dragon as well. I think that sheep was just thinking to himself why am I here why is there a guy dressed as a sheep and can I eat your costume can I eat your costume <laughs> <laughs> so we're making our way now into the Jewish quarter of Kazi Mirz and it just runs parallel to Wavel Castle so if you are looking to imitate this little day of exploring like we're doing right now all you got to do is head behind Wavel Castle or go parallel with it and you'll find your way
Our first stop here in Kazimierz today is this beautiful alleyway where parts of Schindler's List were filmed. Even though this part of the city has never been a Jewish ghetto um, during the occupation of Nazi Germany, the Jewish people were relocated to another area of the city. Um, and this area before the Second World War was kind of a mix of Jewish and uh, Catholic people as far as we understood. But parts of Schindler's List were filmed here in this area. a quick refreshment so let's go in here in a local cafe I ordered a lemonade but it kind of looks like a spinach lade <laughs> let's try mm. it's actually really nice very like you can taste the acidic part <laughs> of the lemon but it's also very minty so it's not spinach it's mint area of Krakow nowadays anyway is considered more of like the trendy alternative type of part of the town where all sorts of people like artsy type of people come together um, you find loads of nice little cafes loads of vegan places a lot of falafel places um, all of these types of things here um, there's a lot of shops as well where you can kind of buy crafty type of things like artisanal goods and uh, handmade things which is really really nice um, but be warned <laughs> with these these types of areas obviously that are, that are considered a little bit more hipster um, the prices go up as well um, I think we just what did we pay for the coffee and the lemonade yeah we just got like a super basic I got a latte and Naomi went for a lemonade and yeah for that same latte and lemonade in even in the center of Krakow we would have paid around 30 percent less than what we just paid the latte that i got was nearly four euro and the lemonade that naomi got i think was around 350 and if you go even to the center square of Krakow you'll probably find places where you can pay half of that so be warned, if you're in the Jewish <laughs> district or the Jewish quarter, uh, the prices go up, but you do have beautiful surroundings like this. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in the city center, you will find places like Starbucks or Costa Coffee as well, where it's going to be the same amount of money. Um, but uh, this area is just a little bit more hipster and alternative, um, which you see all over Europe, really, um, that type of movement and uh, prices go up with that. Gentrification. What would a two What would a two mad explorer video be without a little bit of food in it, right? Four tacos with beef. So we were actually on the hunt for some zapikankas. Cheese and jalapeno. But on the way to the market square where we wanted to get the zapikankas, we actually found this little mum yard. Uh, sriracha is perfect. So a uh, food court, so to speak. And we found a little Mexican stand called Compañeros. Uh, we just ordered some tacos there, hard shell tacos. Um, I'm looking forward to eating this because we're both really hungry. Okay guys, so here we are eating Mexican food in the Jewish quarter of the south of Poland in Krakow. <laughs> super excited to try these tacos out they're hard shell tacos and we just or i decided to just go for spicy on top of more spicy because i like spice and um, we got sriracha sauce we got jalapenos they're layered with cheese and i think they have like kind of a chili or spicy little nacho or dorito in there so chin chin guys mm, holy sh Oh my god, that's very spicy. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, that has a kick to it. This is gonna blow my face off. I can't even I can't even talk. It's too spicy. Very tasty but very fresh ingredients. 
but very spicy. My face, I can see it, it's going red. This is gonna blow my face off. If Luke is dying, I don't know what is going to happen to me. This is gonna blow my face off. Um, I'm gonna try and grab the jalapeno and put it aside. Mm. I see it. If you can hear somebody breathing heavily, Luke is currently dying behind the camera, so... This is gonna blow my face off. <laughs> it's giving me a lot of hope for my future. It's actually not that spicy. It's good, but like, it's very tasty. But it's not as spicy as I thought it would be. That little food court that we just stopped at was amazing. They had plenty of different types of fusion type food. So they had a Mexican food stand, they had beer, they had Japanese food, they had a bunch of stuff. They even had Polish food there as well. So now we're gonna make our way towards Volnica Square, which is supposedly the main square to check out in the Kazimierz district. If I would live somewhere close to this food court, I swear to God, I would be severely obese. Friends of ours were saying that they had their best ever zapikanka in Poland here in this exact square somewhere. So we're still looking for the local zapikanka dealer. Uh, we're not too sure where we can find it, to be honest. I see a lot of sushi places, kebab places, ice cream places, bakeries, um, but no zapikanka. Where's the zapikanka? Actually, funnily enough, since we came to Krakow, we've been looking for Zapikanka. I know a few places that sell it in the main square area of Krakow Old Town, but since we came here to Kazimierz, can't really find any Zapikanka, so we're just looking. We're on the hunt for a Zapikanka to wrap up today's video. Hopefully we come across it soon. After the Zapikanka disappointment, we decided to go with ice cream instead seemed easier. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We came across a place called Papa Gelato and uh, you can't really go wrong with a name like that. So I decided to go for the cream with pistachio in a chocolate cone. I can't wait to try this. And I got uh, a cream and apricot. Yeah, it's like seems to be Naomi's go-to flavor. She loves yogurt and she loves apricot as well. So exactly. um, we are going to give this a shot, see what it tastes like. I'll go first. Wow, that's very creamy for a cream flavored ice cream. And uh, <laughs> I'll give pistachio a go. Pistachio uh, tastes like pistachio. <laughs> it's really, really good ice cream. Very creamy ice cream. And uh, yeah, it wasn't really that expensive either. We're right here in the Volnica um, Square or Plaza. So what a perfect place to come and enjoy an ice cream in this beautiful weather here in Kazimierz. Smooth transition. How insightful to say that the pistachio ice cream tastes like pistachio ice cream. Mmm. Oh, this is good. I'm not really of a, an ice cream type of person, but this one here is... Yes. So guys, that's it from us today. We are the two mad explorers. And this is your reminder to keep exploring. So guys, we'll catch you in the next video. We are headed to a totally different destination tomorrow, but it's still gonna be in Poland. So stay tuned for that. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks very much for watching this video. We just launched our community, our channel memberships here on YouTube. So if you want to be part of this community, make sure to check out the benefits and perks down below. All of this is only possible because of you guys and with your support, we will be able to keep going for a lot longer. Zapikanka? Zapikanka. <laughs>